Welcome to this short podcast related to accruals accounting. This podcast is about adjusting entries and we are going to look at deferrals. Adjusting entries are made before we prepare the final financial statements. This might be for the end of the month, the end of the quarter or the end of the year. So can we group or put the adjusting entries that we make into any sort of order, in other words into categories? Well, they fall into two basic types, that is deferrals or accruals. And they're very simple to explain. A deferral is when we put off making a payment. So we can have deferrals for expenses and of course we can also have deferrals for revenues. What about an accrual? Well, an accrual is the opposite of a deferral. An accrual occurs when the event has occurred, but we haven't yet recorded it. And again, we can have accruals for unrecorded revenues and for unrecorded expenses. Now, if we look at deferrals, we can group these as prepaid expenses. In other words, we pay the expense and we record this as an asset until the expense actually occurs. For unearned revenues, the cash is received and recorded as a liability until the revenue is actually earned. So let's look at examples of how we would actually make the entries for this. Let's take a prepaid expense. Usual practice then is for a company to record the prepaid expense as an asset until the expenditure is actually incurred. And most commonly this occurs for insurance and rent, but it could also be for supplies. So what's the procedure? Well, the initial entry will be for the asset. And then as the expense is incurred, so we need that second entry. And it's the second entry that we refer to as the adjusting entry. So we'll have an example here. Road Trading making a payment of $6,000 on January the 1st to tight-fisted insurance for the building's insurance for the year. So the initial entry that's required, this is obviously on January the 1st, is that we're going to debit an asset account called prepaid insurance with the sum of $6,000. And of course we must have a credit to balance that and the credit will be to the cash account because we paid out $6,000 for the insurance. Right, at the end of January what's happened? Well what's happened is that we've used one month's worth of insurance. So we've got to expense that insurance. So if it was $6,000 for the year that's $500 per month. So on January the 31st what we're going to do is to credit the prepaid insurance account with the $500 which represents what's been used of the asset and of course we are going to debit the expense account for insurance because we've had an expense of $500 of insurance for January. Now let's consider a similar example here where we look at supplies. So Inky Finkers purchased printing supplies June the 1st and that's mainly paper and printing inks and they pay $8,000 in cash. And at the end of that month, the end of June, an audit shows that they have $5,500 of supplies that still remain. So what initial entry would we make on June the 1st? And then what would be the adjusting entry on June the 30th? Let's take them one at a time then. The initial entry for the purchase of supplies will debit an asset account for supplies with $8,000 on June the 1st. And of course we'll credit the cash account with $8,000 because we've paid for those supplies. Now we come to the end of June and we have $5,500 of supplies left. So we need to determine what we've used. So we had $8,000 to start with. We've got $5,500 at the end of the month. So subtract one from the other and we can see we've used $2,500 worth of supplies. So, okay, what we're going to do then is debit an expense account for those materials with 2500 to show the supplies that we used during June. And we'll credit that original supplies account with 2500 to show how much of the asset of supplies that we've actually used. Right, in the previous example then, we made the adjustment for the supplies used at the end of the month. Now why don't you make the adjustments on a daily basis? For example, if you're going to do supplies, why not do it on a daily basis? After all, you're using them on a daily basis. And of course, the answer is that you would be making a large amount of extra work, checking all the supplies and then making the entry every day. So there's no real need to do it.
Now, rules change over time. So at one time, companies who spent millions on advertising campaigns were allowed to record the total as an asset, and then they were allowed to choose how much they moved to expenses each month. And they claimed that this reflected the actual effect of the advertising campaigns. Now, companies are now required to expense the cost when they actually do the advertising. In other words, when the advertising actually occurs. You might wonder why this requirement was made. Well, of course, if you're spending millions on advertising and then you can move it around from one month to the other to decide how much you're going to spend or how much it was actually effective, then, of course, you may not be presenting an accurate figure for your accounts. Depreciation is a special type of adjustment. So, what's the uh, meaning of depreciation? Well, what we're doing is trying to spread the cost of an asset, in other words, sorry, spread the expense of an asset across the useful life. So we're only going to consider in this podcast straight line depreciation as a very simple example. So we have a burger company producing, uh, purchasing a deep fat fryer for cooking. They pay 10000 on January the 1st and they estimate the life to be four years. So let's look at the entries at the start of the year, January the 1st, and at the end of the year, December the 31st. So at the start of the year, then, we've got to record the purchase of the equipment. So we'll debit an asset account for equipment with $10,000, and we'll credit the cash account with $10,000. Now we get to the end of the year. So the initial cost was $10,000. If it has a useful life of four years, divide $10,000 by four, and that means we're going to allocate as the expense 2500 for each year of use. So on December the 31st, we're going to allocate this depreciation expense. So our entries will be to take the depreciation expense account and to debit that with 2500 And then we have an asset account for equipment depreciation, which we will credit with 2500 That equipment depreciation, although it's an asset account, Asset account is actually called a contra account because the entries are the opposite of what we would normally expect. We'd normally expect debits in asset accounts. In a contra account, you have credits. Now we'll take an example for income that we have. Blue Lagoon Apartments, they rent apartments out. They collect the money when the booking is made. But of course, they provide the service at a later date. So let's assume that in March they get $15,000, 10000 of which for rentals in June, 5000 for rentals in July. So what entries will we make in March? No, it's on March 31st. And what about June the 30th? What would be the adjusting entry then? Well, on March 31st, it's fairly simple. We've received cash for 15000 so we'll debit that with $15,000. And we have unearned revenues because we haven't actually provided the service yet. So we have an unearned revenues account which we're going to credit with $15,000. Now at the end of June, we've actually earned 10000 of that revenue because the rentals have then taken place. Now the unearned revenues were a liability. So what we're going to do is reduce that liability account by debiting it with 10000 and we are going to increase the revenue account, revenues from apartments, for 10000 because the sale has actually occurred. The service has been provided at that point. That ends our short podcast, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors, presented by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. For more information, you can look us up at parkbenchtutors.com.